Today, we go over the 3D Benchy with the 3D printing add-on and kind of see how the 3D add-on goes and works with 3D models. And this is a pretty well-known model. And I got the model from Thingiverse. It's the uh, 3D Benchy by Creative Tools. I think this is the original one. I'm pretty sure it is. Anyway, so that's what we'll be doing today. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Kevin with Inventspark, and today I'm going to be going over the 3D printing options in a little bit more detail. I just kind of went over them generally, but here today I'll just go over them more in depth and kind of show you what everything does. First I'm going to move this to the middle here. Not sure what I just did, but <laughs> it happens. Okay, so first I'm going to just create a little square that's got some offset things on it. Stack that. Subdivide it. It's kind of as an example of what the 3D printing thing does. If you look at the way the object I just made is, it's not really anything. But the way that the everything's lined up, you can see here there should be a line going there and it would be the same on this other side because that's exactly the same but the way that it interprets it right now it doesn't know any better of what it's really doing. Because it's kind of showing this as a sort of a blob. And so if we go to the 3D printing options, when you click on these, it just shows you the uh, everything that's happening. So we have one overhanging face, that's this one here. Like if you're just looking at it like that, it shows the overhang there. shows that everything's solid, it's manifold. There's no intersections of faces where there would be two faces that are overlapping or intersecting. I don't know what this one is, Degenerate. I haven't really looked into that one that much. And Distorted, there's non-flat faces. That's just the three I just showed you. It's this one here, this one here, and this one here. And the thickness, that's if you had an object that, like, yeah. I think it means, like, the thickness of, like, a wall, like a window would print. I haven't really looked into it that much, but it doesn't show any sharp edges. Overhang we already went over. And you can check them all, and it shows you what it does. And you can click on these to actually correct those. And for these... Because the isolated, I'll show you what that does real quick. Say we have a random spot out there, and I'm just gonna delete that edge there. So we still have this little point over here. It doesn't even have to be that point, because so we have that those two there. And what isolated does, if there's any vertices that are outside of the object that don't really belong or or part of the object, if you had isolated, it just gets rid of those. And for distorted, if you looked here, the three that I was talking about previously, you can change this angle to let's see if it does anything there. And it fixes both of them. If you change the angle up, it has to be that much of an angle before it'll fix it. See, that's above that angle. See, it fixed that one, but it didn't fix this one because the angle's not high enough. 
so if we go move this to a lower setting, it'll fix those. It'll make that correct than how it should be. So if we hit this and check all, it'll fix everything except for the overhanging edge. And the overhang, like what, what this would actually help with is the uh, support structures. If you have overhangs that are Let's say 15 degrees. If you have overhangs that are and it selects those out for you so they'll let you know. If you have zero degrees it shows you everything that's there. If we do 90 There's none that are over 90 degrees. So let's try that again. 75. And that's the bottom one. There's nothing that can really be done about the bottom one. That kind of need that one. But this, basically, if you have, like, whatever angle you know you print at, if your printer has a hard time printing at that level of overhang, like I know on the Benchy, a lot of the times the overhang on that is having a problem. Let's go ahead and I'm going to import that. And see what angle that edge is actually at. First, I have to remember where I put it. There it is. Okay, so here's the Benchy in Blender. And so if we look at it, like this angle here, if we just take a cube, size it up a little bit, and if your printer has a hard time printing at this angle, I know mine does, unless I have cooling on really good. This angle, so this cube, I just rotated it to almost 50 degrees. So my printer has a hard time with 50 degree angles if there's not enough cooling. And it's actually not that good. My printer's really not that great of a printer being a, I built it myself, but I can actually get somewhat rather decent prints if I have cooling on it. I need to get a better cooling fan for it. But going back to this, if we look at this and if there's anything, let's do 45. It's going to take a while because there's all sorts of things on here. And we're not in edit mode either. I guess I just crashed it. <laughs> That'd be funny. It happens though. Nope, it didn't crash. So, overhang of 45. There's 29,526. So you can see this is a very detailed model. I mean, a lot of effort was put into this. I don't know what program, what they made it in. You probably look it up and find out, but. Just as an example, that's what the main overhang is. Anything under that typically is pretty easy, but it's a pretty steep angle, but I don't know why it didn't show those up. Oh, we have to click on this, that's right. So it's going to check all of these and see which is which. So there's actually quite a few problems with this model. Overhanging faces. It selects all the ones that are overhanging. 
of course at the bottom. You just move that out of the way. Go back to it, it'll show. See that was 45 degrees, so this is above 45 degrees that it's trying to print that at, and these overhangs. These are all the problem areas that are in a print, and it, this is actually a really good example to show the problem areas of prints and kind of where most printers have problems if you check the overhang angle. This is a good way to check prints that you're having problems with to go in here and see if there's anything you can do to help it if you can change the model at all to help it print it better. This one, <coughs> excuse me, the intersecting faces though, I'm wondering about that. Okay, so it's showing those down here. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> Where'd it go? Focus in on that. I'm having a hard time. Because there's more than just that little area that are the ones over here. It's hard when you get such a detailed model, but it's there's actually problems with this model. With the intersecting faces here, there's some of these that are overlapping or something. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with them. But oh yeah, yeah. Focusing on that. This is such a small spot. This is the <laughs> the B on the back of the thing on the benchy. This little tiny intersecting face see how it's doing that there it shouldn't be doing that and that's why it's doing the uh, here it's finding that the zero faces well, I found a lot there That was the degenerate. I'm not sure still what that means. Well, that's the zero edges. Non flat faces. There's a few of those. Thin faces. That just shows all the uh, faces that kind of have just really small widths on them. They're just not really much to it. It's I don't know why <laughs> it's even showing that up. I don't think it really is working properly with that for the thickness. Sharp edges. Not seeing where they'll show up. I don't see them anywhere. Overhangs. That's what we were looking at initially. But yeah, I wonder if uh, isolated, distorted, didn't remove anything. D45 is what its default it is. Didn't do anything, make manifold. See, it removes 75 edges, 75 faces. Do it again, remove two edges and two faces. See, it shows a plus or a minus before the number there. As you click it a bunch of times, if something's not shown as a manifold. So it didn't do anything, so if we go back in here, <coughs> hit Control Alt Shift, 
N, not M, it should select all of the non manifold. So it shows that it's manifold now, so I bet if we did the check all, we'd have a lot less errors. Because the non manifold kind of fixes a lot of things. Even though it was manifold before, what manifold means is basically is the entire object solid on the outside. So it didn't fix everything, but it did reduce them. But the uh, non manifold things, usually it's overlapping. Faces like the, uh, what was it, the zero faces that I was seeing. Like this was one of them. I'm going to focus on just that one. And I'm going to go out of orthographic can do perspective just to see if I can see any more detail about this. As I'm zoomed in pretty far I can't zoom in much further. There we go. Oh yeah this right here this changes the view. It'll start clipping the image if you get too close to it but to turn it down all the way. Same thing with your zooming out. I'll show that in a little bit. But And zero faces. I just don't really know quite what that means. It's just, I think it means that it's an unnecessary face because you could put both of those together and get the same thing. Because it was showing like that one and that one. They're just too small and narrow and they really serve no purpose to be there. It's just too complex for it. A lot of necess necessity. Okay, it's like, oh. So if we wanted to, let me show you, I'll just make a cube, actually not a cube, a plane. And see how it starts clipping up there? And it's clipping right here. We change that and make that bigger. That makes it so that you can size the cube up way bigger. Zoom out again and it starts clipping more. I think it's 10,000 or something like that it stops at. Yeah. So yeah, that's 10,000 millimeters. Move that. Like a kilometer out. <laughs> something like that, I don't know. How many is that really? I don't know metric that well. To be honest, <laughs> I like it, but I can't move the zeros. So we've got centimeters. It'll be a thousand centimeters. No, a hundred meters. So it'll be about a football field size. Anyway, that's pretty much all I was going to show you about the uh, three printing functions and just a little bit more detail on it and what it does. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.